G'day friends, welcome to today's YouTube video. My name is James, welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you are new as well. Now, if you're new, I always say this, but if you're new, terrible video to start if you're new. Um, but if you just wanna learn this specific skill, Hopefully this helps. Um, I first have to say I'm not approved by Photoshop. I didn't go to graphic design school or anything. So anything you learn in this video is literally just what I ended up finding out through trial and error. So please, if you have a better way to do it, um, don't worry about this video. <laughs> if you already know how to do what I'm talking about, don't worry about this video. Um, this is just for people who uh, wanna get a better look at how to perfectly size their photos for journaling. Um, I guess for anything really, but I'm specifically doing it for journaling because sometimes I've got these really specific ideas and I need the photo to either fill a certain frame or I need to make sure that the face is at least like one inch wide because I'm gonna like punch it out with the hole punch or something. So knowing these really simple Photoshop kind of workarounds is a really easy way for me to be able to complete those projects. Otherwise, I just kind of have to keep printing it out and resizing it and just guessing every time, which just doesn't work for me. So I don't want to bore you with all kinds of like crazy computer talk because really, I mean, I don't know it, but <laughs> I'm going to show you what I do. I'm just going to go through that process. I'll make a few things. I'm going to switch you to overhead mode in a second, just to show you some of the parts of my journals where I've specifically sized photos for different reasons. And you can see why this becomes important for some projects. It was actually super important to know this stuff for my travel journaling because I had a lot of ideas that involved a lot of different photos. So, um, it was really important for me for then. So I wanted to put this kind of out on YouTube so that everyone could have access to this information because it is quite general. But if you are someone that has a travel journal that you're working on and you want to get into those ideas as well, like this is really, really good for that. Or scrapbooking, I guess, but I don't, I'm not a scrapbooker. <laughs> Let's not pretend I know about scrapbooking or project life or anything. But for whatever reason, you might want to resize your photos. I've actually got a PDF that I made for this lesson. It is available in the Berkmates Creative Outlet Facebook group. This goes through step by step. There's 10, but it's kind of a blurs into one after a while, but um, I go through the steps on how to make this. This was a page I just wanted to make two inch by two inch square photos as if I wanted to fill little Polaroid frames all over my journal. That wasn't what I ended up doing, like I actually didn't do anything with it. But these steps apply for what we're going to do today. So we're going to use this to go through this tutorial. So please uh, follow the link below if you want to download and print that and follow along, make your little notes. Because some of the things I say, they might not make sense to you. If you just want to write down like, move the arrow over this part, then that might make more sense to you than what I'm telling you to do. I can't stress this enough. I am not very proficient on computers. I didn't go to graphic design school. I didn't do any course. This is just bits of information I've picked up over a long time of trial and error. So chances are a hundred percent I have made a lot of these terms up. So let's just go for it. I'll switch you into the overhead view and we'll look at some of the journals and the specific reasons why I wanted to resize some of the photos the way I did. Okay, so here's the PDF that I'm going to make available in the Berkmates Creative Outlet Facebook group. Link down below in the description if you want to get your hands on that. I do anticipate probably having this up on my new website whenever that happens, so just go pop over there if it's live. It's probably not by the time I'm putting this video out, but it might be soon, so that should be there too. A super fun project I needed to resize photos for was this recreation of It's a Small World, the facade. I decided to take photos from my trip to Tokyo Disneyland with Stella and put them in the little shapes that made up the uh, whole image. I thought that was really cute. It was really important to resize them because you can see they become really small when you're, you're working with them, so if I was just going to print these out like a regular four by six, I'd be chopping into the photos to make these shapes and I would lose a lot of the image. So it was really great to be able to downsize the image to fit these little shapes and then print them out for this. Speaking of that same trip, I actually decided to document it in my Hobonichi five year journal with little photo collages that filled the little box. So instead of writing about my day and not being able to pack in all the information I wanted to get in there, I just decided to take the photos that best represented the day and then just collage them into a little strip that I decided to put in here. These were mostly done, I think everything I'm showing you today was done with photo sticker paper or adhesive label paper, whatever you buy, it kind of, it sounds different. I've I've used some that specifically say they're matte photo sticker paper and others that say glossy label paper, but they will also be linked in the Amazon shop storefront down below as well. The Chilton Wove matte adhesive photo sticker paper is the best quality I've ever used. So that's one I'd recommend if you're gonna try this. Without giving too much of the Memory to Memento travel journaling course away, here were some little samples I made as I did tutorials, but these were specifically sized photos to fit, especially this project here where you can see these photos all had to be the same width so that I could create this stacked and dimensional effect. So I needed to know how to resize them for that. And lastly, my travel journal from Japan, even things like this, this is a mailbox, a picture of a mailbox I took at Tokyo Disney Sea. I needed to know how to fit it to the page. There are some more obvious ones like a full page photo. 
so you know this book isn't exactly five inches by seven inches or eight by ten or anything and I didn't want to guesswork it I wanted most of that photo in there as much as I could get it's actually about 5.5 inches by eight inches so it's a really odd size so just knowing how to resize your photos is going to open up your world I'll show you this one too because this was an important one to know how to resize for all right I'm not going to give too much of that away but it is really important to know how to resize your photos if you want to have more of an opportunity to play with your ideas so let's move you over to the computer and we'll go through this process first I'm going to make a full page photo for one of these weekly pages in my planner. So I've got to measure that. I'm gonna make a photo collage for one of the strips in my five year planner, much like I did for this trip to Japan. I also did it for my trip to Australia as well. So I'm gonna to have to measure that. And I wanna create one of those little cutout pages in my Hobonichi. So I'm going to have to measure this as well. And since I've got it out, I might as well do my measurements in this. So for my full page photo, I need to know how big this page is so I can size the photo accurately. So it's 21 centimeters. I know I'm Australian, I do centimeters. <laughs> I'm gonna have to measure from the middle here because the elastic's kind of in my way. 21 centimeters by, now it's 10.7, but I'm just gonna put 11 centimeters because I'm going to make the photo the full bleed. So I'll have a little bit off the excess and I can just trim that off once it's stuck down. If I did it exactly to 10.7, I'm gonna to have to make sure it is lined up absolutely perfectly when I go to stick it down and I'm not very neat. So for now, let's just do 21. I could even do 22 if I really wanted some extra overhang, but I think we'll be good, 21 by 11. That's my full page planner photo. Now I need a little photo collage for one of my little boxes here. So let me just try and measure a flat part. Oh, you know, I've got a small ruler here. I'll use this one. The box is 9.5 centimeters wide and it is 2.6 centimeters tall so it's really tiny I'm gonna put hobo five year collage so we know what to make of that one and the last one I want to do a cutout page for my hobo Nietzsche but since I'm gonna cut off the top I don't really need to know the height I just need to know how wide it is so 14.5 wide but I'm gonna go 15 centimeters just so I have a little bit extra I can trim off the side so it hits all the way to the edge. 15 centimeters, I'll still measure the top because we can make our file that size, but 21 centimeters high. But I don't really need to worry about how tall the photo is because it's just gonna be cut off somewhere around here. And this is the Hobonichi cutout photo. All right, let's go to the computer and work on these three photos. Okay, so we're at the computer. We've got Adobe Photoshop open. I've got the 2017 version, apparently. I think they all kind of work the same. I've got my cursor set to a really big size, so hopefully you can see that really well. Full transparency, this is the first time I've ever screen recorded and narrated through the process, so let's just pray it works. I'll also just mention that below, in the description, I'll have a list of all the things I use when I'm doing photos. So. Photoshop, my Canon MX922 printer, adhesive backed photo paper just because I'm too messy with glue, Tim Holtz trimmer, Tim Holtz mini snips, and a slice tool if I'm getting really fussy with the fussy cutting. So I'll leave that in the description below, but that's it. I'm not gonna go into detail about printing or anything just because everyone's printer is gonna be different, but let's get started on this. So step one was measure the space I wanna put my photo. So the first one we're gonna do is the full page for my planner. And it was 21 centimeters tall and 11 centimeters wide. So step two, create a Photoshop file with those dimensions. So I'm gonna to go to file, new. This little screen will pop up. I'm gonna change pixels to say centimeters because that's what I measured the page in. And on width, I'm gonna make this the same size that I just measured. So width was 11 centimeters and height was 21 centimeters. I want the resolution to be at 300 because that's pretty standard and good quality for printing. I'm gonna leave everything else the way it is and press create. Oh, I don't know why I've got this big brush. I'm gonna change it to this select tool. Now this is the exact page dimensions of my planner. So the next thing I have to do is just bring my photo in. Step three, drag photo or photos into the file. This is where you could add multiple if you wanna do a collage. We'll look at that next, but first I just wanna pick one. So I'm gonna go click my finder. I've got a few sample photos here. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I wanna put this photo of my cat in. Now it is a square photo, so I'm gonna drag it over. Step three is to drag it in. The thinking wheel of death might pop up, but that's fine. We'll just wait. There we go. Now see how it's been formatted to match the width, but it's not going to take up the whole page. So at the moment, this will cover side to side of my page, but it's not going to cover the full thing. So since it's already ready to be resized, I'm going to click on one of these edges here. Now, typically I would hold down the shift key and just resize it like this. 
and that will keep the aspect ratio all nice and the same. It'll lock it. If I didn't hold the shift key, it would start warping. And I don't really like that. So I hold the shift key and see how it'll correct itself to the same ratio. So step four is resize to fit. I'm going to just resize it so that I can fill that entire page. There we go. Photoshop is really handy sometimes. Those little pink lines, they're kind of snap lines. So it'll snap to the center of the page, either vertically or horizontally. I'm just going to go horizontally. I'm going to press this little check mark up the top here. That means to place the file. So that's where I want it. I've, I've transformed it. It looks good. Now I can just move it around on the page. However I move it is how it's going to look when I print it. So I'm going to have it so that Oliver's head, if you don't know, this is my cat Oliver. <laughs> I'm going to have it so that his head is right in the center there. I can get both his ears in. There we go. Just nudge that up a little bit with my arrow key. So I'm pretty happy with that. Step number five, create a new Photoshop file to print. I'm going to size to US letter size because that's the size that my transparent photo paper is. So I'm going to go file new. I'm going to do US letter size. Now in Photoshop, there is actually a bunch of pre-selected options here. So in the print, you can see that it says letter 8.5 by 11. But just in case, it's the same thing that we did before. So instead of centimeters, we're going to go inches 8.5 by 11. That looks good to me. And I'm going to create this page. This is the one I'm going to print. So let me go back to the file I just did. Can you see these two tabs up here? I'm going to go back to the first one that we've been working on. And I want to copy and paste. Number six is copy and paste the resized photo to that print file. So I'm going to go select all. That's going to select everything on my screen. I make sure that this layer is selected because that's the one I want to copy. So I'm going to press that. I'm going to go up to edit and copy. Now I'm going to go over to my other file and press edit paste. Now that is the size of my page and that's how it'll print on a US letter size piece of paper. So if I print this at 100%, I can just trim it and stick it straight in there. It will cover the entire page. So we'll look at that, but I don't want to do that quite yet because you can see there's a lot of negative space up here. So I want to maximize how much I'm going to print on this paper since the adhesive backed photo paper isn't cheap. If I hold this, can you see this curved arrow that pops up? That's a rotate arrow. So I'm going to hold my shift key down and that'll shift it if I just keep moving this around, it's going to shift it around. I want it at 90 degrees. I'm going to put it down the bottom of the page. That way I can free up a lot of extra space up the top to print more photos. So I'm just going to drag that down. This is number seven on the list of instructions to Tetris your images to maximize printable space. So once I've turned that around and moved it, I'm going to press that check mark again to say, yes, that's where I want it. You could also just press enter but I don't really know because my Photoshop's from 2017. So let's just go with that. Let's make our other two files so that I can print them all out on the same piece of paper and not waste any paper. So I'm gonna close this one. I don't need it anymore. I'm just gonna press the X. Don't save it unless you wanna reprint it, but I only need one of these photos for my journal. We're gonna start that whole process again, but we've got a different idea now. So we need to approach it with that idea in mind. So I'm gonna press file new. This is for my Hobonichi five year. I wanted a little collage of photos. So I'm going to go over here and change the size again. I'm going to go centimeters. Now the size we measured out was 9.5 wide. And it was 2.6 high. I'm leaving it at 300 pixels per inch. It is very important that not only this file is 300 per inch, but also the file you're going to copy and paste it to, because if those are off, the sizing will be off. It's a pretty standard format for Photoshop just to assume that it's 300, but just in case you miss that. So let's go to this. This is our little block that we have in our Hobonichi five year for journaling. So I'm going to put a collage of photos in there. I want my finder again so I can get some photos and I might want to pick the coffee. I'm going to hold command so I can pick a few at a time and the tree in the journal. And I'm going to drag them over into my little bar over here. Now it's automatically going to size it so that it can keep the whole image in there. So I'm going to press yes. I like that. It'll place the next one because I dragged three at a time. So I'm going to press yes and I'm going to press yes. Now I'm just going to move those around so that I can make a little photo collage on my little block for journaling. 
you can fiddle with these. If there's a bit of space here, you could always resize one. Now, I will say if something sized down, you might want to re-import it because sometimes you'll lose image quality. So if I sized this all the way down to this and then pressed OK, and then if I tried to size it back up again, it could lose its image quality. I don't know if it really does. I have seen it happen before. So if it does, just make sure that layer is selected and just press delete. So we'll get rid of it. And then we can open our finder back up. We'll just click that one drag that back in and now I can resize it and hopefully it won't be compressed image quality or anything. So the reason I've actually decided to make this one bigger is because I want to cover that blank white space that we had in there and this is a pretty good photo for that. But I haven't accepted this resizing yet and before I do I'm going to go over here. This is the layers panel. I'm going to press this and go darken. You could also press multiply but see how it takes out that light space and now it looks like it's almost stamped over the top. I really, really like that because now I can place it so that I've covered up that seam and there's no white space there. And I'm also not losing any of that quality of the photo underneath it. So I'm going to press yes to this. And this is just a layer style. So you can change all of these. You can put screen and it'll screen whatever's underneath. Difference and saturation. A lot of these do a lot of different things, but I always usually just use darken or multiply when I'm doing this. And then it kind of makes my image... Uh, stamp. Now I don't have to keep this how it is as well. If I wanted to fill more of that white space at the top, I could just rotate this photo to start filling up that space. No one's really going to know that I didn't take the photo like that. So be experimental with this. You might even resize it just a little bit. This is all personal preference at this point, but now you know how we got to this stage. And I don't really think I like any of that. So I'm going to press cancel on that and just have it the way it was. All right, now all of these are separate images, so I need to flatten this whole thing so that I can copy and paste it. So I'm going to go up to layer up the top and press flatten image. Now this is going to flatten all those layers. I won't be able to select them individually anymore. That's all one picture. This means I can go back up to select all. I can edit copy. I can go back to that print file that I have and edit paste. And now I have one of these bars ready to print as well. So I'm going to put that over here stack that on my page ready for printing and I can go and close out this. I don't need to save this either. That's great. Now we've got one more. We just want that one more photo. We can do the cutout in the Hobonichi. So let's make our new file, file new. The Hobonichi size was 15 centimeters by 21 centimeters. So I'm going to put 15 wide, 21 high. Create that. There's our Hobonichi page. I'm going to open up my finder again and put this image of Toontown in, I think. I think I want to cut out this little skyline of Toontown. So technically, if I was just imagining that this was my Hobonichi page, I would just be cutting off all of this here. So anything that falls above that, I don't need it. I actually just need this to hit from the gutter of the book to the edge of the page. So this is technically perfect unless I wanted to kind of zoom in a little bit. And I probably would because see how I don't have the top of this part here? So that would probably look a little odd in a silhouette. So I'm going to hold my shift key down and size that up until that hits the edge. There I have a much cleaner silhouette line to follow. Just know though that if you are zooming in, you're obviously going to make those buildings larger and they're going to take up more space on the page. So I might zoom them in just to about here, I think. I'm going to press accept. Now this is a completely extra step, but I actually don't want to print out this sky because I'm going to cut it off anyway. So I'm just going to delete some of it. I could grab my eraser tool here. I go to press on it. It wants me to rasterize the object. I'm just going to press OK. And I could just start erasing. I could also grab this little lasso and just select a big area that I can just delete. I'm probably not going to cut out that crane either. So I can just delete that. Once I select this whole area, I'm just going to press delete. See you later. Press my select tool again. And now we're going to do what we've been doing and select all. Now that's only going to select what's on the page. I know it does technically extend out here, but it's only going to select what's on the page. I'm going to press edit copy, go to my print file and press edit paste. And now I have this ready to print as well. But see, we've got a little bit of an issue here because now I can't fit it on the page. And this is what I mean about Tetris. I could technically fit this here and I'm going to do that but I'm going to have to bring this photo up here or I could turn it sideways and put it there. If this were really me doing it and not just in a demo, I would flip this on its side as well. 
just so I could really have those flat edges together. Press accept on that. And I would move this over here and I would probably turn it up this way and put it on the side here. And I would still fill a lot of this extra space with photos, but just for today, so I can show you, I'm going to print this. I'm going to go up to file print. Remember everyone's print settings are going to be different. For me, I'm going to hit the print settings because I just want to double check. I've got a US letter borderless page. That's great. It says low ink, but I just changed it. So that's lying to me. <laughs> <laughs> in this section, I'm going to go to the quality and the media because instead of plain paper, I'm going to choose matte photo paper and print quality. I want it to be high. I want it to be as high as I can get it. I'm going to press save on that. Now down here, and this is what I said, everyone's is going to be different. So you just make sure you find where yours is. This has to be a hundred percent because we've done all the good job of measuring everything. If I've done scale to fit media or it becomes, you know, 98% so that it can fit on the page properly. If you don't have a borderless print setting or something, you need to make sure it's going to print at a hundred percent. Now I like Photoshop because it gives me this view and I can see that it is going to print inside where I need it to print. So knowing that it is 100%, I'm going to press print and then go and grab my photos from the printer. All right, it's printed. Now I need to trim off all the excess. So I've got my little Tim Holtz Phonics Studios paper trimmer. I'm just going to separate them first because I don't like to uh, cut them all in one sheet. The thing I love about this paper trimmer is that you can butt it up against the edges so you know you're getting a really nice straight line. You've got this little guard to protect you as well. So I'm just gonna slightly chop into the photo just a little bit. Some of these photos we did add a little extra to the width. So it's not really gonna matter. I've printed it on transparent sticker paper. So it should be a bit of an interesting look. This is the first one we did. Desperately needed a picture of my cat for my planner next week. <laughs> so I'm gonna peel it off. Oh, I probably should have not peeled it all off at once. <laughs> it's all right, let's just go for it. Try and line it up neatly in the spine. Just love the sticker paper because there's no glue, no mess. And then press down over the edge. I don't know how well it'll pick up on camera, but can you see all these little air bubbles? If you've got a bone folder, just grab that and just burnish it into your page. Can you see the difference? I'll show you. See this part of the face where I've burnished it in? That's why you just want to uh, lightly go over it, just gently. You don't want to ruin the photo or anything. Or you might want to let it dry if it's just come out of the printer, but that'll give it this seamless kind of melting into the paper. So I'll just finish burnishing that up. I've got a slight bit of overhang. So once I'm good with this, oh, if you don't have a bone folder, I used to do this with the back of my fingernail as well. It works the same, you'll ruin your fingernail. <laughs> okay, pretend we burnished all of that in. I'm gonna flip the page over and grab my scissors and just trim this excess off. If it's not 100% perfect, don't worry. It will for the most part be perfect. I've noticed that sometimes if I print it straight from Photoshop, it'll be a slightly different size than if I print it from the preview window or some different settings on the printer make it print. Like if it's faster, it'll print a little wonkier and a little bit larger. Everyone's programs are gonna have those little quirks. So unless it's a huge problem, I think this will do us. And it looks perfect to me. There you go, that's a full size photo and perfectly fitted into my planner. The next one we looked at was from my five year Hobonichi. So I'm gonna grab my trimmer out again and I will trim this one exactly to size. Got my little photo. These things actually didn't happen on this day so I'm just gonna put it off to the side so you can, see. well maybe I'll put it on there. I wanna put it on there so you can see that it fits perfectly. It's fine, I'll sacrifice today. <laughs> Oh, I put it on wonky. Oh no, and it's stuck down. Okay, it's ever so slightly wonky. <laughs> I'm gonna burnish that into the page as well. You win some, you lose some with your placement. I've said this before, but you can guarantee if you're ever gonna demo something, that will be the worst time you've ever done it. So <laughs> I'm not gonna set my expectations too high. In any case, that is how I made these little photo collages. I tend to restrict how many I put in this journal just because it's 365 days and I really don't want it to bulk up a ton. But I have done little photos before, even teeny tiny little hands and kind of full length photos as well. This is all done the same way. I would size those little hands so that they fit in this. I would size this so that it fit in this part of the square here. I think that was 12 centimeters. 
So there is the Hobonichi five year one. And the very last one to finish out our tutorial is the Toontown Hobonichi cutout page, which is one of the techniques very relevant in my travel journaling course. I'm gonna cut off just this excess because I don't need it. I'm gonna wait to trim that outline until I stick it to the book just because then I'll be able to cut through this page and this at the same time. And do not stress, my Hobonichi is just a sketchbook and a try everything in here book, so I'm gonna peel that off. I'm gonna actually move it down the page a little bit. But you know what, I'll do it on this page, then it'll be nice and clear for you to see. I'm gonna move it down because I wanna just chop off some of that excess at the bottom. And I'll learn my lesson from last time. I'll line it up with the gutter. Oh, I've still gone wonky. It's fine. <laughs> All right, I'll just give that a little burnish into the page just so it looks a little nicer. This is obviously not a problem you would have with non-transparent photo papers. Do you know what I mean? Like a glossy label paper or the Chilton Wove matte photo sticker paper. You're not gonna need to burnish that in. This is just because it's transparent. You can see through it. So you can see all the little pockets of air in there, which makes you wonder how well you really glue things down when you can't see that. Because once I finish burnishing one of these in, it looks like it's done on the page. Like it looks melted into the page. It's really great actually, I love it. Let me cut off the back of that. Just so it doesn't stick to everything. Oh, waste not, want not. This could be a little washi tape over here. I am so messy with glue. I can't tell you how life changing it was to print my photos on sticker paper. There you go, two pieces of incidental washi tape. I could use my little Tim Holtz mini snips for this. These ones, I might get these out in a second, but I might start with this. This is, I think is from the Daiso. I was actually gifted that little cutting mat. This is a slice tool, which is a really, really small version of an X-Acto knife. So I'm just gonna cut from the spine. And if I was doing a really good job, I would spend a long time trying to cut around all of the different little pieces. But for all intents and purposes, I just wanted to show you how to size the photo. There we go. And I don't want to rip that page out because I might compromise the spine. So for now, I'm just going to tear it out with a ruler spacing at the gutter and I could just tape it to the back here. Go, no one will ever know. And there's my little cutout silhouette of the buildings. Wow, I mean, what a great way if you're like 12 days behind in your Hobonichi, <laughs> you could just cut out all these pages. It's not for everyone, I know. I know there are some people out there shuddering at the thought of taking a blade to your journal, but I personally love it just for the fact that you get to try new things and do more interactive projects with it. So there is the cutout for my Hobonichi. Here is my Hobonichi five year little photo collage and the all important full page, full bleed cat photo in my planner for next week. <laughs> I hope you had a good time learning that. I know it's a super specific thing to learn, but this has brought me a lot of joy and has opened up a lot of opportunity for new creative ideas with regards to photos and how I incorporate them in my journaling. So I did want to share that with you. Remember there is a PDF download available in the Berkmates Creative Outlet Facebook group. If you're watching this sometime in the future and should that not exist anymore, then it would be in my website. If that doesn't exist anymore, then it's probably not anywhere. So <laughs> um, just go check that out. Again, I'll leave a list of things that I use used in this tutorial in the description box below. They are Amazon affiliate links. No pressure to buy, just there for you to know exactly what I used. Until next time, have great fun putting photos of cats in your journals. Bye. <laughs>